Um, today we're going to replace the chain on this James Way uh, single chain conveyor. Believe it or not, this conveyor is a 1977. This conveyor used to lay the other direction in this barn. We had one bunk when I started working here in 1981. This conveyor had a trap door in the center. And what that did is it dropped the feed down through and we had a double shuttle feed, which is what it was. And uh, on one end it would drop on one shuttle, and then if you open the trap door it would drop on the, the first shuttle. So we had a bunk that was divided the other direction, um, end to end, and we had two groups of cows, and they were milking 80 cows then, so we had um, dump half the feet on each end of the bunk. It still wasn't a, a, a lot of bunk space, but that's how we did it. It was there and from 1977 until the summer of 1987, um, when I graduated from Ohio State, we built the second feed bunk over here turned this the other way, took out that drop section, and since then it's been used to transport half of the feed. So this transports the feed to what we call the low group bunk. And the other half of the feed gets dumped before this into the high group bunk. And uh, you saw our video last year when we replaced those original feeders, those patch feeders were put in at the same time in 1987. And then last year we replaced those with the valve, spark, or, or valve metal feeders that we have today. So today's project, and in between there, we replaced um, these sections. Um, that makes this a little challenging. These sections are all one piece. Now on our DeMuth conveyors, there's a top trough and a bottom trough, and they're connected with strap, so you can replace one or the other. When these wear out, you replace a whole unit. Top and bottom are, uh, are riveted together, and they come in, I believe, 20-foot sections, 10, no, 10-foot sections. And we replaced those uh, about 1990 to 1995. So the only thing that has not been changed on here is the boot, sprocket, and, sh and bearing and shaft, and the drive head. And those, and when we did the sections in 1990, 95, I took a welder and welded up the sprocket, built up the teeth. And uh, they seem to still be okay, so we elected to put chain on here. The chain was. Uh, roughly $900. A new conveyor to replace this, a wooden conveyor, would be, uh, what did I tell you, $2390, $2400, something, something like that. Lines. So it's cheaper to replace the chain than to replace the whole conveyor. So we're going to do that this time. Um, I suppose next time something major goes bad, it's going to be a matter of, a matter of uh, uh, total replacement. But uh, the other week we replaced the, uh, the wrap around on the boot down there. It was worn out. And so, uh, and the side, we, we did the whole boot, didn't we? Yeah, we totally tore it okay. apart. Okay, so anyway, yeah, it's been making a lot of noise. It's been actually shaking a little bit. And so I think it's largely due that you can see this chain, there's, there's pieces of it falling off here. It's all rusted apart, so that's the job. So Ben's gonna start loosening up the tensioner on that end so we get it collapsed. And I'm gonna take this master link apart here. And then we'll show you how we changed chain, I don't know if it's the right way or not, but it's, it works for us, our method of, uh, of changing out chain. This is called a, a 667 piddle chain. I guess it's because of the length of the link. But anyway, when I think piddle, I think pin. And so it's pinned together, as you can see here. It's coming apart kind of difficult. But anyway, that's the way this chain works. You have to take pins out and uh, put them back in, of course, put it back together. And when you shorten it, you have to grind off rivets and drive them out, you know, to shorten it. I prefer, personally, a detachable chain, which you just hammer apart. 
but that's that's my personal preference but this one just so happens to be 667 and that's the only option that we have so we'll get this apart here and then we'll begin the process of extraction what I did here is I attached the new chain to the old chain with an old pin and just a piece of wire that came with it and what we're going to do is we're going to install this using power we're going to run the new chain on with the drive Ben's going to mount, man the switch and I'm going to try and keep the new chain feeding in and wrap up the old chain at the same time. It's a little tedious, um, but it does work. It is possible. So that's the next thing we're going to do here. So I'm going to put you guys where you're safe. I think you're safe there. So that's the next step. We've got to go a little bit at a time so nothing gets knotted, gets knotted up you get trouble. So I've got to keep tension on the old and unwind the new. And if in a perfect world it works. Let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. Just want to go a little bit of time? Yeah. Wait, let me catch up. Uh, let's see. Another thing that's making this challenging, the place that we got the chain from has it wrapped inside out. It's making it a little bit of a challenge. It's all backwards. I don't know why they did that. I hope all three rolls are that way. Okay, let's go a little more, Ben. Ready? Yep. I think what I'm going to have to do, well I know i got to saw it off. got to saw it off in order to take the section out. I'm not going to mess around with him. It's easier to cut it off. I guess it helps when you put a battery in a cutoff tool, doesn't it? Yeah. They tend to work better with batteries. Day, so we thought it was a good day to do this. Wet, rainy, ugly. Try and put it together so your cotter key head is pushing feed, not the tail. So it won't bend and break and fail. pins have a little tab on them that keeps them from turning. It's always a challenge when you're putting it together, but once you get it lined up, well, it's nice because it keeps the, the pin from turning on you when you're trying to grab your cutter key. Okay, you ready? So while he's up there 
unrolling and pulling the old chain, I'm down here running the cross conveyor breaker. I only turn on for a couple seconds. You ready? so it can go and then you worry about pulling on the old stuff okay you gotta keep tension on the old so you don't bunch it up in the bottom then you got a problem the new stuff tensions itself because the driver is pulling on it the old stuff you have to tension okay Sounds like the new is starting to come up, so we're going to be done running this here pretty soon. Okay. Okay. A little more? Okay. here. Might be able to get that one get here. It? I think we can. Okay. Get that one right there so we gotta grind that one off. It's halfway out at least. Mm -hmm. Might not have to do much tensioning at first. Yeah, I was going to say. Been resistant. I don't think it's going anywhere. Okay. Let's turn the tension. Up here and we'll lift it and see what fuel is. Maybe we'll get lucky and we won't have to do much. I think I got all the crap out of there. I don't see anything. Uh, three quarter, three right? quarter, nine sixteenths. Is that bolt supposed to come out or not? Which bolt? That one you're working on now. No. Okay. It's uh, got two inches yet to go. Well, what do you want to do? Go ahead and tighten it up. Next time you tension, you're going to impact around. You're going to bust it up, transfer the waste, and knock it around here. It's a pain back in there. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm Two inches. Inch and three quarters. I was hoping to get 
call the play. So it was the way it was. So I'll talk a little bit about how this works. I'm down below now. I had to come down here and jam these bottom bolts. But how this works is you've got a bolt here and a bolt there and a bolt way up there. You can see the rusty one. And those, uh, when you tighten them, they'll clamp this and, and put pressure on this where you can't adjust it. So you'll have to loosen them first. And then this bolt here, this long bolt, as you tighten this, pushes this boot end out. And this is your idler end. That's your, your main shaft going through. You have an idler sprocket in here. And as this pushes that way, it's drawing tension on that chain and pulling it tight. So that's how this works. You use a three quarter wrench to, to run the, the uh, adjustment there, a nine sixteenths wrench to break all them loose. There's six of them total, three on each side, and then one three quarter uh, nut. And we use a tape measure to measure from the end of the shaft to the face of the um, angle iron to get you your your uh, adjustment point. That way you can make sure that you have the, the chain running straight. Um, that way you can try to make sure you don't have any unnecessary derailments. But I guess we're buttoned up here. I'm gonna go run it and see how it works. Fingers crossed. This is the proof of the pudding here. Ready? Yep. Then get the strap. 